Me and Jeff are doing a trade, and uh, this is a Space Fury that uh, Jeff picked up from a friend of his. And uh, I've been kind of bugging Jeff ever since he uh, ever since he got it. And eventually, we came to some sort of agreement, and uh, I'm giving him a Popeye, and he's giving me this uh, Space Fury. Problem is, I already have a Space Fury, so why would I want two? Well, the reason why is because you know, 95% of the parts are identical to um, uh, Eliminator. And I don't have an Eliminator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this to Eliminator, um, you know, and have yet another game in the Vector Collection. And that, that, that's my whole goal here is to get as many Vector games as possible. But this is, this is Jeff's truck. I want to show you over here. Oh, by the way, check out my new sexy truck. This is amazing. Oh my god. Income tax money. That's, that's what happened. Look at this. Yeah. Um, it's a flatbed. Yeah, don't show my license plate. Oh, I'm not. <coughs> Anyways, so there's this uh, Popeye. I'm going to gonna give that to Jeff. And uh, yeah. So, all right. Me and Jeff were just talking. I need a name for my truck. Because Jeff has the Arcade Lincoln. That's a really good name. And I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to one up that somehow. So if you can think of a name for my 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 arcade mobile, let me know. There it is, arcade nerds, a thing of beauty, the Sega Vector. Um, let me tell you my plans for this. Uh, first off, I'm I'm not going to do a quick slam bam fix for this. It's gonna take a while. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't have the money to be to go out and buy a bunch of parts right now, so uh, it may take a while for a second part of this video or third part of this video. We'll see. I don't know. I have no idea what's going on with this. I just got this from uh, Jeffrey Oler, and uh, uh, you know it, it does not work. And so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to let's just go over it and let's see what it needs, what's going on, and so on. Um, <clears throat> now, a lot of you guys. Uh, think I'm some sort of vector god, but I'm not. I'm not. You know, I, I'm. Um, I get just as stressed out as you guys when you, when your vectors go down. Um, <clears throat> and to be honest, when it comes to Sega vectors, I have less experience. Um, for example, I've probably I probably re repaired 25 Sega vector monitors ever. Um, so, you know, there's, there's guys out there that know a lot more, uh, than me about the Sega Vectors. Uh, I'm good, but I'm not great. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so, uh, so for, for example, this guy needs to be mentioned. I'm going to leave a link in the description, um, for a guy by the name, uh, well, they call him Bill Tronics. He, he pretty much wrote the book on Sega Vector Repair. Most of everything I know was because of that man. And he did a lot of research. He, uh... He <clears throat> he figured out every single transistor's modern, uh, better equivalent. Okay, and that's that's a huge thing. It would have taken a while for anyone else to do that, and he took the time and he overdid it, and and he he posted for everyone to you know to benefit from his work, and that was a good thing. I'm really glad. Um, <clears throat> but okay, so let's go over this here. This first thing I notice is there's a slight dent. You may not be able to see it in the camera. But there, there is a, a dent in the control panel right here. It looks like someone got pissed off and slammed it. Okay, so I'm gonna hammer. I'm gonna hammer that out at some point. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to. Uh, <clears throat> by the way, I didn't say my uh, my goals here. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to convert it to Eliminator. Um, I already have a Space Fury. Uh, it just so happens most of the parts between Space Fury and Eliminator are exactly the same. Um, and, and often, many times, the Eliminators were converted to Space Fury. Right? Am I right, Kelly? Pretty sure. No, or is it the other way around? I don't remember. Anyways, let's go, let's check out the, uh, coin door, or the coin door. Oh, okay. Well, I see some stuff disconnected. Uh, first thing I'm noticing right now is there's no clips. There should be a little bracket here on each side. That uh, so this should pull back. Try to pick it up. 
Okay. Let's look at these boards. Now, also, um, when, I, when, when we do this, uh, I'm going to do the uh, security bypass hack, which will allow me to... <clears throat> Which will allow me to uh, run the uh, different game. That's uh, that's too many runs. I think that's uh, that's uh, Star Star Trek. <clears throat> okay. Oh, that's right. Um. Um. Fred. Uh, Fred. I want to say Fred. Jeff told me there's Star. There's an extra ROM board in there. I'm trying to get this with one hand. I really should be using two. Let me, let me set the camera up. Okay, now I have the camera on my microphone stand. My tripod broke recently. My son knocked it over and it shattered. But, okay. Now this has less ROMs on it. I believe this could be Space, Space Fury. Okay, so we have a Space Fury ROM board. And that is my speech board. That's a, uh, once again, I believe that's a Star Trek speech. So I don't know, this might be kind of a combobulation here. I don't know. And I'm guessing this is Space Fury speech board. Now, normally you shouldn't have two speech boards, so. Uh, probably has something missing and I already from looking at it right now I can tell damn it like the most expensive board in a, in a whole cage is missing that board I'm referring to is the Space Fury analog soundboard missing damn that's kind of a bummer well once again here's a Star Trek ROM on this board it's interesting now, um, it's, oh well, it looks like I just kind of just pieced together. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll eventually have, the only, the only part I don't have, I have lots of these boards, and, and I'll, I'll get these boards working and so on, but uh, later on in the video, of course, or in the next video. But this is the CPU board, okay? <clears throat> now, Sega did something uh, kind of smart, and what they did is... <clears throat> Since the, since the hardware is the, is the same for several games, they didn't want you to just, as an operator, to update the ROMs and then make it play a whole new game without getting their piece. You see what I'm saying? So, what they did is they put a security chip right here. Okay? And um, what, what the security chip did was it, uh, it kind of scrambled... Okay, the data on the, on the EPROMs, which would be... What it'll do is it'll read this, the data off of this EEPROM board, and it has to go through this chip before it gets to the CPU. Now, um, so the data is, is purposely scrambled up a little bit, and this would read some sort of code and then straighten out the, the order. I, I'm oversimplifying, but it would straighten out the code on that other board in a way that this CPU can read it properly. And you need to have that mystery chip in order, you know, that this chip needs to match whatever game it, whatever game it's in. Um, <clears throat> so, what I'm going to do later on in, in this or next video is I'm going to do the security bypass hack. And what that does is it, I'll burn custom ROM chips on the ROM board, and I will remove this chip. And and uh, hack it uh, and solder jumper wires across it. I'll probably make some sort of a board that plugs into this, and it basically uh, shorts things out, so that chip is no longer used, and the EEPROM data is already in a correct manner for this CPU to read it. Now, <clears throat> so it's basically it's basically a hack around Sega's security. And let's see here, we have ourselves an X XY board. One of these is the timing, and one of these is uh, analog, I believe. Now you can see this. This runs off the same DAX as Asteroids. A couple op amps here. Um, often I see bad 2114 RAM on these. 
and that would be these socketed chips here, I believe. I can't see this. The light's in my face. Yeah, 2114s. Often these uh, go bad. But it kind of looks like I have a combobulation of parts and uh, I'm missing the board. See, what, what I plan to do is I also have a, a complete working tax scan set downstairs. And I, except for this board, I gave this board to a buddy of mine because he needed it. So, <clears throat> what I'm probably going to do first, well, when it comes to the boards, what I'm going to do, because I'm not going to start with the boards yet, I'm going to start with the power supply, um, or the monitor, but uh, what I'm going to do is, um, what I'm going to do is get something working first, and uh, then once it's working, then I can probably work on the monitor and so on, and, and, and you know, and I'll, and I'll swap between a working machine, the cards, to find which cards are good, which cards are bad. That's one wonderful, wonderful thing you can do if you have another working Sega Vector handy, of course. Not everyone has another working Sega Vector. So it's, it can be difficult, when, especially when multiple boards are bad. <coughs> so let me go around the back and uh, let's check out the monitor. Now I was given, hold on. When I got the, uh, this game, Jeff, uh, gave me this. He says it goes to it. So, that tells me someone has, someone has, uh, has had the monitor apart, maybe had issues, maybe they fixed issues, who knows. But, uh, you know, so something's got to be going on with that monitor. So, let's check out the monitor. Okay, so, we're behind the machine here. <clears throat> and I see some things are unplugged. We got a bare wire here. Looks like my focus. Everything's unplugged. The yoke's unplugged. Everything. Look at that. Even the uh, anode cup is separated. The ground is separated. Someone's been in here before. <clears throat> now, um, I'm not sure, but I think that might those might be new capacitors. I'm not sure. But one good thing is, I don't see any. Well, the paddle boards are good. I don't see anything burnt. So that's a good thing. Um, by the way, um, this tube is the exact same tube that, they, that, that is in Atari Vectors. And, um, <clears throat> for example, Space Duel and Tempest and so on. This tube can actually be thrown into a, uh, a Sega Vector. And, believe it or not, yes, it is true. The inductance is a little different on this yoke, but this yoke can be pinned to plug into an Atari Vector with no ill effect. You can actually use this yoke with an Atari Vector. Anyways, <clears throat> and I've done it on the long term. It, it, it's okay. It is slightly different inductance, but you have a perfect picture. But, uh, so I'm going to have to go, go through this. You know, I guess the first thing I'm going to do, once I get the power supply sorted out and, and checked and whatever, and the board's working properly, and I'll, I'll use a scope to see the picture. Once I do all that, I'll worry about the monitor. The monitor's going to be the last thing. The monitor is, is uh, actually probably going to be the easiest part of this, of this build or repair here. Um, it's just, you know, <clears throat> I have less experience with this type of monitor than I do with the uh, Atari vectors. For example, I mean, I have the Atari vector schematics memorized, you know what I mean? Um, and this I'm gonna have to actually look I'm gonna have to actually look at the schematics and you know look this over before I put it together uh, <clears throat> Okay, so let me let me go first thing I'm gonna do is let's focus on the power supply and what is all entailed with the power supply I'm going to show you a modification involving the transformer that uh, is a good idea and I suggest you do to every Sega vector Okay These were uh, missing uh, so I put them back in their normal positions. But I want to tell you to move them to a different location. And this is why. Okay. So <clears throat> if you were to move this tap here and move this tap here, now you're going to have 10% less voltage coming out of this transformer. Um, <clears throat> Why do I want 10% less voltage going to the monitor? By doing this, your monitor will run a little bit cooler, which is good, which is good, right? Okay, so I think I'm going to, 
I think I'm going to just test the power supply. And if, it, if the power supply does have clean power, then I'll test it again under load, and we'll see where we get from there. Okay, now <clears throat> on the back of the cage, there is this plug. This plug gives the power to the back plane. The back plane plugs into every single board and distributes the power. Okay, now <clears throat> what we're going to worry about is right here these three black wires. I'm going to touch one pin here. Okay, and I'm going to turn on the power. Now, these uh, wires right here, these three wires should be my plus five voltage. And I have five volts. Okay. There's my negative five. And over here should be my positive and negative 12. There's a negative 12, and there's positive 12. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that the um, power supply has, it has all good regulators and transistors. Now, but that does, but, so that's good, but that does not prove that the power supply is good. Uh, this power supply could still be bad, and the reason why is because a capacitor or two or three could, could be below the normal range and could be failing. Now, <clears throat> this meter, it's not an oscilloscope. It's not going to tell me um, if there's a ripple in the voltage. And the only way we're really going to see a ripple in the voltage is if it's under load. Now, <clears throat> what I can do is I can measure it with the voltage meter, and it'll it'll be somewhat you know somewhat accurate. But the really the best way to, to measure this is with an oscilloscope to see if you have a ripple. Okay. But what I'm going to do is since I know I have good voltage. I'm going to test it. I'm going to retest it again under load. Um, so in other words, I'm going to put boards in here because now I know, now I know that the voltage is correct, so it's safe to put boards in this card cage. Um, so <clears throat> there shouldn't be any worries of the power supply frying the boards, which is good because a lot of people just plug things in, they have no idea, and <laughs> make things worse on themselves. Uh, trust me, always test your power supply before you plug something in that some mystery game from a warehouse. But okay, so Hmm. What I think I'm going to do, I'm going to pull the back plane out and I'm going to wash it before I even put anything together. Okay, so I have the back plane and the cage in the sink right now. And I have a paintbrush. And on this paintbrush, I have Tarnex. Okay? It's, Tarnex is used to, to clean uh, jewelry, uh, it, it's, it's used to clean gold and silver. Okay? And what I'm going to do is. I'm just going to wipe the back plane. Nice soft paintbrush gets right in there really good. I can see them shining from here now. Good. You'd be surprised how quick I'm going to clean those connections up. Real nice. Okay. So, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but it's like sparkling now. <clears throat> So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to I'm going to hose off the entire thing. I'm going to wash it up real good, and uh, you know I'm going to wash it up with some dish soap here. Okay, um, there's something I did that I, I want to mention. Um, it was kind of bugging me about the uh, about not taking out the back plane. So I took those four screws here, 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 and here out, and I cleaned the back plane, rinsed it off real good, and I um, oh oh by the way, anytime you wash a circuit board. Do a final rinse with rubbing alcohol. Why? Because it removes hard water deposits and, and minerals. So it, <coughs> uh, okay, rubbing alcohol is basically, um, um, what's it called? Not deionized, but evaporated distilled water and rubbing alcohol. And distilled water has no minerals in it. So, <coughs> well, not many. It, uh, sometimes they do. But anyways, you don't want any minerals left on here because minerals can conduct electricity. Okay, so Kelly cleaned out all the dust here <clears throat> and uh, kept this all mounted. Power is plugged back into the back plane. And uh, for testing purposes, we don't need any of this harness at all. Not yet. Okay, I just want to see if uh, we can get a screen on this oscilloscope down here. Okay, so... Uh, let me tell you the bare minimum that a Sega system needs. 
obviously you need a vector output to see if you have a vector output. So put your vector boards in uh, this way. Okay. Now there's a ribbon cable that joins these two together. Be careful. Jeez, sometimes these get me. Come on. Okay, there's that one. Good God. I <laughs> screwed up. Too busy looking at the top. Should have been looking at the bottom. Okay. Bottom. Top. Bottom. Top. Boy, that goes in, in tight. Okay, so we have our vector boards connected. You have to have ROM data. So we're going to put a ROM board in. And you have to have a CPU. So I'm going to put a CPU board in. Now keep in mind I just put in the Star Trek uh, ROM board and I have the Star Trek ROM here. So this is, this is how we're doing that. You can't just put the wrong combo together. Okay, so I'm going to plug this in here. Now let me zoom in to show you where I'm going to connect my scope. Okay, you see this right here? What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the center pin is ground. So I'm going to connect to ground. Okay? And one of these is X, the top one maybe. And then the bottom pin is going to be X or Y, whichever. Okay, so I have that connected. So, now I'm going to pull, let me zoom out. Now keep in mind, my scope does not have a Z amplifier, a Z, Z circuit connected. So, uh, all the vectors will be drawn together. So, turn it on. That doesn't look good. Okay, so I'm going to take a guess and let's go for the uh, CPU. It could be either one. Uh, <clears throat> could be either one. Um, the vector, vector board actually has a clock signal that comes from the CPU board. So this could kill this board and so on, you know. A million things could be wrong at this point. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the RAM. And yes, I know this it has its own self-test, but uh, it just seems easier to me. I don't want to look up all that bull crap and count the beeps and the blinks and all that. What I'd rather do is just get my NeoLock RAM tester and test each RAM chip one at a time, just because. I don't know what's wrong. It could, could be something else entirely, but it's so common to have RAM issues with these boards. I'm going to test the RAM. Check it out. First chip I pulled failed. Well, maybe we'll get lucky. I'm going to test the rest of them and let's see what happens. Okay, all the rest of the chips tested tested good. So, as long as there's nothing wrong with the XY board, the timing board and all that, we should be good. Or there could be a problem with the ROM board too, who knows. Okay. So, okay, let me zoom in and show you what I'm doing again. I'm just connecting the um, oscilloscope. My ground. And my X and Y. Okay. Let's turn it on. Oh yeah. Kelly, it works. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Now, now keep in mind, um, there's no, the Z, 
is not turning off and on. So the Z is constantly on. Um, and so you won't get a perfect picture, but at least I know I have a picture and I, I know I have working deflection right now. So that's excellent. Yeah, I think, I think we're good. I'm a little concerned about the lines on the side, but I think that might be okay. I don't think you don't actually see that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think the only thing left to do now is put the monitor back together. Oh, you know what? Before I do that, let me test a few things on the monitor. Then put the monitor back together and maybe we'll be in business. I don't know. Okay, before I put the monitor together, I want to test these transistors first. Because if one of these transistors is bad, it will basically just cause a chain reaction and damage parts on the board. Possibility of that. And, uh, you know, I already have it out. Let's test it. Just getting a quarter inch. And I'm kind of wondering why this is removed. I don't know if the guy recapped it or tore it apart with good intentions and never touched it. I have no idea what happened with this thing. Might as well wash this thing too. Okay, so. I'm going to pull that off. I'm going to set it this way. My good meter took a crap. So now I have this cheapo Harbor Freight deal. Oh man, good old O'Doul's. It's non alcoholic, but I drink the stuff like I'm trying to get drunk. <clears throat> Every time I think of old duels, it reminds me of that one movie. Okay, so we're going to set it to diode test. You know, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test the transistor to the frame for continuity. No continuity, no continuity. That means this is not uh, grounded out to the frame. Now I want to try this in all different sorts of orders. And to read 0.6 volts Okay, there's 0 0.6, 0 0.6, so that's a good transistor right there, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, whatever. Okay, that's another good transistor. Okay, so, let's do the same thing with this one. Frame to the transistor, no continuity. Frame to the transistor, no continuity. So I know these are both not shorted to the chassis. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm basically just going to probe around until I find a reading. Okay, I got a reading. Now, since I have a reading, that means one of these probes needs to move. I'm going to try the black one. Yep. So I have 0 0.5 two times. So I know that's a good transistor. So I'm just going to randomly probe around until I find a reading again. Okay, I have a reading. So one probe needs to move. So I'm going to move the red probe. No, I'm going to put the red probe back. Now I'm going to move the black probe. Okay, so we have a reading there now. Okay, <clears throat> so as long as you read 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, whatever, around that range, two times per transistor, you have a good transistor. The things you're looking for is you do not want a dead short and you do not want something opened up. 
Okay. And so let's put this back together. And this is uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and get a paintbrush and try to get the dust out. And I'm gonna put this back together and let's go back over to the monitor. Now, <clears throat> before I put this back in, I want to talk about a modification that some people do, and I think it's unnecessary. But at least you should hear about it to ma and make up your own mind. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you what the modification is, and I'll tell you why I believe it's not necessary. Now, often people will mount the transistors in uh, the other direction. In other words, remove the transistors and, ma and put it, mount them backwards. And the reason for that is because air flows through here, right? Well. The thought, the, the, me the method behind that is, well, this, these wires are restricting some air. So, the more air, the better. The more air, the better the cooling, right? Well, I've actually got a laser thermometer, and I tested it either way, and it makes absolutely zero difference. So, you know, in my opinion, not, not a worthy modification. Okay, so I'm not sure why this is all torn apart, but... Just for testing purposes, I'm just going to go ahead and reconnect it. And I'm not 100% sure, but it looks like somebody recapped the monitor. I don't know. Now, the high voltage looks like original caps, that's for sure. But these look like somebody swapped them. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. The, the uh, yoke plugs in right here. want to make sure I'm plugging it in straight. Okay. Somewhere I need to find and reach for it. Should be down there. Okay, there it is, but it's too short because I have the board pulled out. I gotta plug this plug in here as the inputs. X, Y, and Z. Ah, that's right. It looks like the. focus block has broken, not broken, a wire has separated from it. I'm just going to, yeah, maybe I'll take it off. I'm going to solder that back on. See that? This wire should be soldered here. And it's a little, it looks like it's been soldered and desoldered a few times. Now, you can test it with that wire disconnected. Uh, as a matter of fact, that is a method I use when I'm pulling the chassis in and out all the time. Um, <clears throat> the, only, the only problem is you will not have a clean focus picture. Now, if that wire is not connected, you will have um, a fuzzy picture, that's all. But just for giggles, shits and giggles, I'm going to solder that real quick. Okay, my focus wire is soldered up. Here's my ground. <clears throat> that goes here. And that's my power. This goes here. Now I can tell the high voltage has definitely not been capped. Okay. And for now. I'm just going to set this in here. In case the transistor blows. Now back here is the plug for this if I remember correctly. Or is that the decals? Yes, yeah, decals. Here's my decals plug. Okay, so where was, oh, it was right here. If I can see. Okay, so that's plugged in. And let's plug in my power down here. Okay, so I'm going to go in the front. I'm going to push that. I'm going to slide the, um, the tray back. 
so I have more slack on this wire to plug it in. <clears throat> okay, so let me find this plug. Still not much slack there, is there? Oh, okay, there is now. I broke a zip tie. Just crumbled away. Okay, I'm going to go in front of the machine. I'm going to turn it on. I'm a little worried, and I'll tell you why. Uh, because these things, uh, a transistor could blow, a resistor could blow, whatever. Cause a nice big burn mark somewhere. And, you know, who knows, all kinds of things can happen. So, uh, is another good thing. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, I tested all the fuses. Um, all the fuses are good, so that might be a great sign. Anyways, um, <clears throat> so it's kind of a good thing that I have a camera running because it'll show me where the sparks happen, if they do happen. So I'm going to go around the front of the machine, I'm going to turn it on, and we're going to quickly listen for a chatter. And if we have chatter, I'll, I'll let it continue to run. And we'll see what happens if they have a screen or not. So, please don't make sparks. I can't tell if there's a chatter or not. It's too noisy. I see nothing on the screen. Mess with my brightness. I see nothing. Turn the brightness up a little bit more. I see nothing. Okay. Pretty sure I've got nothing. And it's hard to tell on this. Hold on, I'm going to shut the light off. And it looks like I have no neck glow. Okay. Okay. I, um, I took out the deflection board and um, I looked at it and I measured uh, all, every diode and every transistor and everything seems, seems good. So um, I put it back in. And uh, I just happen to have this all original, not, not rebuilt yet, uh, high voltage unit. I just swapped it uh, just because, see what, what was going on. And we now have a working monitor somewhat. There's an issue though. Um, Can we turn it off? Can we turn it on? You might be able to see it better. Okay, you see how, how the vectors aren't really, aren't right? Um, I'm going to look into this. Okay, let me talk about what I did here. <clears throat> I think I fixed it. We're getting ready to plug it in right now to test it. But I did find a problem, uh, finally. Um, okay, so uh, what I ended up doing was, I put this inside the monitor frame, I moved <clears throat> the plug for this transistor and the plug for this transistor, and I switched them. And we still had the exact same problem in the exact same area. So that rules out the transistors, even though I didn't really suspect the transistors. I'm just trying to, you know, eliminate everything, everything, everything. And um, since nothing was shorted and I did have a picture, I kind of doubted all these transistors here. But anyways, but since, since uh, oh, also I unplugged this one side right here, and then that, then that, way, that, that, that way collapsed. So I knew the issue has to be on this circuit right here. So, <clears throat> what I did was, I didn't bother uh, looking up values of resistors or anything like that. What I, what I did is, I compared each resistor from on this side to this side, one at a time, one at a time, back and forth. <clears throat> now, I could sit and look at the, look at the schematics, you know, and then, and then check out, or, or read the color bands, and check out every individual resistor, but it's just so much quicker, since these, this circuit is, is identical to this circuit, you know, I just went back and forth, resistor, 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 resistor. And I found one resistor that was opened up. This resistor right here, right here, R630. Now over here we have R730. Uh, this this red 22 kilo ohm, 
And so then I looked at the schematics, and, and I, I measured this in circuit, by the way. And I looked at the schematics, and, and it is indeed 22 kilo ohm at a half a watt. Now, I did not have a half a watt, so what I did is I got two quarter watt resistors that are 47K and twisted them together and measured it, and it still came out exactly 22K. So, uh, I may not have this exact resistor, but this should work, I think. Please, please work. <laughs> okay, so uh, Kelly's going to put this back in. We're going to test it again, and I'm pretty confident this will work. We have a perfect picture. Okay. Now you have to Yeah. <laughs> I was getting a little pissed off. <laughs> I probably have, like, I don't know, two and a half, three hours in this damn monitor. And it was just really pissing me off. Anyways, um, I wanted to adjust it, Kelly. All right. <clears throat> Grab the first knob you see. I don't care. Yeah, uh, 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 a little more. You know what? You know this. This is what I want you to do. I want you to make um, make the picture a little smaller. Okay. Go ahead. A little more. All the way down. All the way down? Yep. Crack it up a little bit. A little there. A little there. Okay. Now, there is a uh, right and left uh, horizontal adjustment. Yeah. Not not width, but position. Yep. Move it. Nope, that's... Move the other one. Okay, the other direction now. Go, go, go. Go, 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 go. Stop. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm not going to adjust the size on the back of the monitor, but at least get centered, and then I'll go down on the XY boards and adjust the bots down there. Okay, now that, now that we have it working as Star Trek, um, let's convert it to Eliminator. And to do that, I'm using the Security Bypass ROMs. Now, see, oh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up this security chip right here. This chip will only work with Star Trek. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my homemade shunt. Okay. And what I did was I got a socket, one of those double sided sockets with so pins come out each end, put it in a piece of perf board, and I did this hack. This hack can be found here. Um, and so what I did, what I'm going to do, is stick that right in there so I can make sure I'm going straight. Okay. Now I'm going to take out the Star Trek EEPROM right here. And I'm going to put in my uh, my new EEPROM right here. Okay, now the CPU side is uh, now converted with a security bypass uh, and to play Eliminator. Um, <clears throat> actually, funny story with this. Um, my e my EEPROM eraser um, is taped together and it's, it looks like a piece of junk, but I've been using it for years. Well, I had my kids uh, throw, throw a bunch of stuff away from the basement, and I think they threw, it, threw away my EEPROM eraser. So I was kind of in a panic. I wanted to get this done. I wanted to see that screen. I wanted to see Eliminator on the screen. <clears throat> so um, I tried making my own. I, I used uh, LED, UV LEDs from a bug zapper, and it didn't erase any EEPROMs. Um, I tried the, uh, a reptile light, <laughs> the, the ultra... The uh, UVB reptile light that did not erase any EEPROMs, and I even tried welding next to a few EEPROMs that didn't work. So I finally broke down and I called my buddy uh, Brian Smith, and he came over and brought his EEPROM eraser, and uh, he erased a bunch of EEPROMs. Okay, so now, uh, yeah. So anyways, I got a new EEPROM eraser ordered. 
Yeah, it sucks. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you know, if you really want to erase any problems, you could leave them out in a, a nice, in, let's say, three nice sunny days. We'll erase an EEPROM if you leave it out. But uh, I didn't want to wait three days, but I ended up waiting three days anyways. It, 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 well, two days. Um, so <clears throat> let's get uh, the ROM board and put that together. Okay, so <clears throat> I have a bunch of uh, EEPROMs here. And uh, I wasn't entirely sure on how to... Oh, see, see, these files came from uh, MAME. Or actually, these are hacked files. Came from a guy by name. I believe his name is Dave Fish. I hope that's right. If not, I'll put some text right here if I'm wrong. But anyways, um, and uh, so th they're still numbered the correct, still numbered correctly. But I was I was a little unsure of uh, what order they go in. So I looked at a few other uh, Sega vectors, and I, and I noticed that the lowest number starts right here, and then it increases, wraps around, and wraps around. So. It, Often MAME, here's here's my lowest number chip right here. Often with MAME, they'll either go with numbers on the chips or with the position of that chip on the board. So I wasn't really sure. But yeah, the guy that, that did this hack, he made things possible for, for example, um, Vector Labs, uh, Mike, he has, he, he has his own uh, Sega multi-kit, and Clay Cowgill, even before him, made his own multi-kit for Sega, and Dave kind of paved the way for those guys. He's the one that figured out the the mod for the uh, security chip. Okay, I'm just making sure all pins are in. I think I'm good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick the CPU board back in and put the new ROM board in and let's see if it works okay they're in so let's uh, see if it works oh, that's the damn camera okay power We have a limiter. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, the lines aren't really straight there. I'll have to mess with the monitor a little bit. Oh man. That is so awesome. I love the track mode in Eliminator. Very cool. Look at this. How cool is that? Oh, and I love the explosion in Eliminator. That, that's like slow-mo. Um, but it's like, I don't know how to describe it. it. It's like an animation, it's like a vector animation that that it feels like only a Sega could do. <laughs> Oh man. All right. Wow. Unfortunately, uh, man. Oh, we have two hangups. And those hangups are going to have to wait till next video. Um, hang up number one. I, I don't uh, have an eliminator control panel. But, uh,. I do have an overlay. 
Uh, unfortunately, I mean, I'm not going to ruin this panel. I'm going to, I'm going to get uh, a Zaxxon panel and uh, drill new holes. Uh, and the reason why is because this is a Space Fury Illuminator, this, a Space Fury uh, control panel. There's not that many out there. I, I don't want to ruin it, but um, I will ruin a Zaxxon panel <laughs> to, uh, to make my Illuminator panel. Um, also, the, another hang up is uh, I don't have a meatball soundboard. See, <clears throat> I still need to figure out the pins that, that, that'll make eliminator buttons work, number one, uh, right here on the CPU board. And number two, um, eliminator uses a soundboard called the meatball soundboard. And I'm going to have to somehow source it or I believe um, Mike from uh, Vector Labs, I believe he repros it. Uh, I, I don't want the multi soundboard, if, if, you know, but I think he makes like the single ones too. I could be wrong. If he does, worst case scenario, I'll have to buy a multi soundboard and then hack it to only play um, the Eliminator sounds. But uh, yeah, so this is actually a working game minus controls and sound. And unfortunately, that's gonna have to have to wait till you know, till I have more money to screw with it. But I can at least put on a few a few of the graphics. I do have an original marquee. Kind of sucks how somebody put the wrong screws here. I don't know why, but it always bothers me when I see the wrong screws on marquee rackets. I guess it's not that big of a deal, but, you know, bothers me. Okay, set bracket. so weird. An original eliminator is a hair too big? Wow. What the heck? Is the camera just in my way? Get out. It's a little bit wider. About a millimeter too big. Okay. 
Okay, so let me get this out. I'm definitely going to want to clean it, but for now I just I got to see it in there. just fall out, isn't it? Get out. Oh. Isn't that supposed to just fall out? Let me get this camera out of my out of my way. hidden spruce I might put in here. Oh, I remember. I gotta take out the bottom piece of wood. Bottom piece of wood out. Yes. Then this comes out. Okay. So, let me get the camera point down so you can kind of see what I'm getting ready to do. I am. going to pull the Space Fury art out. This piece of tape holding it on. Pull this out. I just put in is repro. I had a buddy of mine make it for me. Doesn't look bad, looks pretty good. Not bad. Seems like it's a little uh see I you know I, like it's a little low but hey it's it's actually good. You know, if I hold it up and put it together that way, it looks great. Unbelievable. Let me let me try to uh, zoom out. Okay. So now, all I have left is controls, soundboard, CPO. And it'll have a working eliminator. Well, guys, uh, you know, I, I think I mentioned in the beginning of the video it's gonna might be a multi-parter. Um, I don't know. I mean, do you guys really want to see me put a CPO on when this is ready? I mean, do you guys really want to see me slide a sound card in? I don't know. I think I might call this. You know, uh, let me know if you really want to see me. You know, do the last few things. But keep in mind, it might take a while until uh, I finally get them. You know. But, all right, guys, uh, this is it. Uh, uh, give me a thumbs up. Uh, give me a, you know, uh, oh, subscribe if you can. And uh, have a good one, guys.